الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام where we strive to be in the company of the blessed and holy angels by perfecting our recitation of the Quran the recitation of the Quran is one of the primary ways to increase our own Iman. As one beautiful parable tells us, the heart is afflicted with rust, and one of the ways to remove this rust is by reciting the Quran. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as those who recite the Quran. He mentions the characteristics of the believers, and he starts off this description by saying, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ those who recite the book of Allah and they pray and they fast and they do good deeds, they are the ones, Yarjuna Tijarat al Lantabur, they are going to have a very beautiful, a very beneficial, a very lucrative transaction, meaning that they will gain Jannah. So to recite and to memorize the Quran is an integral part of our Iman. As the famous companion Ibn Mas'ud said, that he who does not have anything of the Quran in his heart, in his chest, he is like a broken house, he is like a ruined house. Meaning that if you wish to build your house, you want to make a strong house of your heart, recite the Qur'an and memorize the Qur'an. If you don't have anything of the Qur'an, Ibn Mas'ud described you then like a ruined or a house in shambles. And that is why the Qur'an describes itself as being enclosed in the hearts or in the chests of those who have knowledge. As Allah says, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ The Qur'an is composed of clear verses which is encompassed, enclosed in the chests of those who have knowledge. So if you wish to have knowledge, you wish to have Iman, you must recite, you must memorize, you must ponder over and you must implement the Qur'an. There is no other way besides this. In our previous episode, we were discussing the rules of the mad or the elongation of the vowels. And today we're going to move on to part two of these rules and we will discuss what happens when a hamza occurs after a mud. Remember we defined the natural mud to be something in which there is no hamza before or after and no sukun before or after. Now we're going to talk about what if there is. A hamza before the mud we discussed it already. We call that what type of mud? Substitution. 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 Okay. Now we discuss what occurs if a hamza is, exists after the letter of mud. Now Logically, this can occur in one of two ways. The Hamza can either be in the same word or it can be at the beginning of a different word. Which means that the Mad occurs at the end of one word and the Hamza occurs in the beginning of the second. So let's take each of these two rulings one by one. If the Hamza occurs in the same word as the Mad, we call it the connected Mad, Al Mad Al Muttasil. Obviously, why, is, why do we call it connected? Because it is connected, because it's in the same word. So common sense, you call it al-mad al-muttasil, the, the mad which is connected. This mad, you have to lengthen a very long way. So you have four or five, scholars have given you the choice, you can do it four to four harakas. What is a haraka once again? It is the time that it takes to open a okay, finger from a closed from fist. Okay, so this is one haraka, two harakas, three harakas, four harakas. So the scholars say you have a choice of four or five harakas. Basically, make it very long. long. So you must make this have this med very long. Some examples. Ta'ifa. Notice we have the alif followed by a hamza. Okay, in the same word. So then you have to make it long. Ta'ifa. You cannot just say Ta'ifa, which is a natural mud, two harakas. That would be a mistake. Likewise, over here, khati'ah, you have four or five. You have to make it long. Su'ah, you have a wow preceded by a dhamma, followed by a hamza. You have to make it once again long. As-sama'ah, once again, you have an alif preceded by a fatha, followed by a hamza. You, again, it's just simple. Uh, common sense, you look at the word, you examine what's before and after it, and you apply the rule. It doesn't take, it's not that difficult. All it requires is you know the rule. So the rule is what? If the Hamza occurs in the same word after the letter of Mad, then you have to prolong it to four, five. four, four five. or five. Yes. Likewise, Si'at, you have a, a Ya, Preceded uh, by a kasra, followed by a hamza. Once again, you make it long. 
Likewise, malaika. Okay, again, it's a common mistake. Al malaika. No, this is a natural mad. You have to prolong it. Al malaika. You have to make it long. If you don't make it long, then it is a mistake. So if it's the same word, you call it al mad al mutasil or the connected mad. The ruling, you make it long, four or five, meaning you have to make it very long. What's the other uh, situation or scenario? If the hamza occurs? At the beginning of a different word. This time, again, it doesn't take too much uh, of uh, uh, knowledge to understand. It's called a separated mad. In contrast to a connected mad. In Arabic, we say al mad al al munfasil. Why is it separated? Because, because it's in two separate words. Again, it's uh, common sense. In this case, we have an option. We have a, a, a broader choice. We can lengthen it to two or four or five harakas. It's completely up to us. So you can't go wrong. Whatever you do, as long as you do a mad. Okay? Whatever you do is going to be correct. There's only one point. And that is that, suppose you open up the Quran to recite. The first time you come across a separated mad, you need to make a choice. Do I want to recite al mad al munfasil as two or as four or as five? Once you've made that choice, then until you finish that recitation, you should be consistent. You should be consistent in your choice. If you've chosen to recite it as two harakas, every time you come to a mad al-munfasil, a separated mad, make sure it's two harakas. Likewise, if you've chosen to be four, make it four, and with five, make it five. If you mix and match, it will not be correct tajweed. You should be consistent, but obviously not for the rest of your life, only for that particular recitation. When you sit down, you open the Quran. When you close it, then the next time you come, you can choose another uh, length to do it. Let us look at some examples. Fi and fusikum. Okay. Let us now do fi and fusikum as two harakas. Amr, why don't you try it as two harakas? Fi and fusikum. Very good. Okay. Why don't you try it as four harakas? Qu and fusikum. Very good. And. Why don't you try it as five? Let's do the next example. Try that as five. Ya ayyuha. Ya ayyuha. Okay, very good. See, so we have two, four, five. Everything is allowed. If I wanted to do fi anfusikum as four, I could also do that. Fi anfusikum. I can do this as five as well. Fi anfusikum. So you can do it two, four, or five. But, as I said, you must be Consistent, okay? If you're not consistent, this will be a mistake in tajweed. Likewise, inna awhayna. Inna awhayna ilayka. So you have here the option of inna, you have two, four, or five. If I want to do the two, inna awhayna, move on. You don't have to make it long. So it's up to you how you want to do it, two, four, or five. Therefore, this is the rule when the hamza occurs after the mad. Very simple. If the hamza occurs in the same word, it is called the connected mad. Al mad al muttasil. And in this case, you must make it long. Four or five, but long. You have no option of making it short. If it occurs in a different word, then you have the option. If you want, you can make it two. If you want, you can make it four. And if you want, you can make it five. But you must be consistent in what you are reciting. If you recite the first time as two, it must be continually two, and so on and so forth. Let us now recite uh, Surah Al-Tariq together, and let us try to uh, make different choices of the Mad. Surah Al-Tariq is the 86th Surah in the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء والطارق والسماء والطارق. Okay, what type of mud is in the sama? It's a connected, it's a connected mud. mud. So you must make it long. If I were to say, والسماء والطارق, that's a mistake, it's not it's allowed. I have made a mistake in tajweed. It must be long. How about in الطارق, what type of mud is there? Natural, Natural mud. Okay, let us now move on. 
وما أدراك ما الطارق وما أدراك ما الطارق Okay, here we have وما أدراك What type of mud is this? Separated, Separated mud Now, how did I recite it? Four With four or five I recited it long, okay? Yeah. Let us now recite it as two Because we're allowed the choice وما أدراك ما الطارق وما أدراك ما الطارق So this is the two We did it Both is allowed Okay we can have it two Four or five Let us now go five وما أدراك ما الطارق وما أدراك ما الطارق so we went out all the way, we maxed out to five. Now once again, for those of you who are not familiar with the harakas and how to do them, as I said, you have two ways. Firstly, in the beginning when you're alone, you can actually physically open your hands and try to uh, calculate how long the harakas are. Secondly, and this is the better way, go to the mashayikh, go to the qurra, go to the huffad and recite to them and also listen to their recitation and listen to cassettes as well. When you listen to cassettes, you'll get a much better idea of how to judge how long a particular harakah is. Let's move on. An-Najm al-Thaqib An-Najm al-Thaqib In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz In kullu nafsin lamma Okay, let's rewind some uh, ru rulings of Tajweed that we learned earlier. And Najimu, what do we do on the jim there? Qalqala. because it's a silent jim and it's the lowest type. In kullu. Ikhfa, noon second, followed by? Ikaf. Nafsil lamma. What do we do? Idgham without ghunna, because there's tanween followed by alam. Lamma. Gunna. Why? Meem Mushaddad. We said any time there's a Meem Mushaddad in the Quran, there will be a Gunna. Alayha Hafiz. Another common mistake is that the Alif is made deep. So many people might say Hafiz. This is a mistake. The Alif has to be light. Hafiz. Because there's a light letter before it. Falyanzur. What do we do there? Ikhfa. Okay. Falyanzur al insanu. Another ikhfa. And then mimma gunna. This is actually an idgham. This is an idgham because asluhu is min ma. Right? Asluhu, the, the original is min and then followed by ma. So, falyanzur al insanu mimma khuliqo. Falyanzur al insanu. خلق من ماء دافق خلق من ماء دافق The ماء we have no choice we have to make it long okay يخرج من بين الصلب وال ترائب يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب إنه على رجعه لقادز إنه على رجعه لقادر أوكي ذراء عند قادر what type of raw is that? Light. Light, because it is silent and before it is a kasra. Okay. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's episode. We'll continue discussing the types of madud in the next episode. Recite the Quran properly and try to be in the company of the holy angels, inshallah. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.